Forest Hills, an upper middle class enclave in the heart of Queens, New York, where more than 70,000 people live within two square miles. The neighborhood streets are busy, but PJ's restaurant is empty. That's me, that's me. Prior to opening the restaurant, Joe and Madeline were living a dream life. <laughs> when I first came to the States, I started working in construction, worked with my brother, PJ. PJ and I were very, very close. He really, truly taught me about life and be my own man. I lost my home for 20 years, worked as hard as I could to get my wife and kids, nice things, a nice house. We were going places. And then PJ passed away. Joe was a shell. Joe was just empty. I can't mention his name without feeling that hurt inside, you know? He didn't really know how to walk without that guy being around. He just meant everything to him. I just couldn't stand to see him in pain. And when this place came for rent, I said, go and get the key, and we'll, we'll just name it after PJ. Welcome to PJ. Which is even more special, because this was the bar that PJ owned. How you guys doing? You know what I know about running a high-end steakhouse? Apparently not much. I don't know why we're putting garlic on honey mustard. Joe, it's, it's a honey mustard garlic roasted salmon. That's what it's supposed to be on the menu. Really? Joe and Madeline, they're from a construction background, so they didn't really know what it was like to get into the restaurant industry. My steak just because it's flavorless. Red meat is red meat. I don't know what you would expect myself to do about that. It's a big problem, and the food's inconsistent. I'm a very good chef. People come here just for me. How's everything? That's terrible. I'm sorry. They love my food, and, and everything is great. It was raw. They didn't like the steak. Now I have to avoid two checks. I want this place to work so bad, but we don't know what we're doing wrong. Give me a cigarette right now. Give me a cigarette. I sunk almost $2 million in this restaurant. I see it dying in his shoes right now. The two insurances have to get paid this week. This restaurant, it's cost us it's our savings, our house, our cars, everything. 4000 that was so much money. That's it, I'm going to drink it. Come here. Go and drink it, you've been doing that all day. Joe sits and drink glasses of wine and watch television when there is a million things going wrong here. And he's just basically feeling sorry if the problems aren't addressed. We'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. PJ Steakhouse. It looks great from the outside. There must be trouble on the inside. Wow. This is beautiful. Unbelievable. Wow. Anybody here? My goodness me. No one at the front desk. <sighs> Hello? So, a customer or? Mr. Ramsey, no, I'm the owner. You're the owner? Ah, huh? right. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Pleasure to see you. Um, good to see you too. Didn't expect to see you uh, at the bar. You've got no one at the front desk there. I see that, yeah. As soon as Chef Ramsey showed up, panic set in, and I started getting the butterflies. We're pretty slow this time of day, so. Slow. Is that normal? It is normal for lunch, yeah. Right. Hello. It's my wife, Milo. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Me too. Oh, Eric. Eric, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm not intimidated by Gordon. We're here to get a job done, and we better do the job the best we can. And if he can help us, great. If he can't, then he will fuck himself. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm happy to be here. Um, somewhat, uh, yeah, taken back by walking in and having seen how beautiful this place is. What's wrong with it? I'm not uh, restaurant material, I found out. Uh -huh. I'm a contractor who uh, jumped into this, who thought I'd get great managers, good floor people, I'd sit back and have a couple of wines at the bar. And I wish opening restaurants were that easy, Joe. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh. You know, I'm learning as I go. It can put you in a hole real fast, a restaurant. I don't know where to go, you know? Okay. Well, I've just arrived. Yeah, I'm starving. I'm going to have some lunch, and then we'll talk after, you. Yeah? yeah, I want to cook him a great meal. And I'm going to let them find other problems in the restaurant besides mine, because I don't think mine's a problem. Oh, dear. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. So, steakhouse. Oh, dear. No porterhouse, no New York, no rump. There's only two cuts of steak. Two steaks on the menu in a steakhouse. It should be minimum eight to ten. 
How are you? Welcome to PJ's. My name is Colin. Farrell, thank you. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for Good joining us. So I'll start with crab cakes, then maybe the shrimp and roasted garlic ravioli, and then I'll have the filet mignon with the uh, gorgonzola demi glace. All right, I'll go put this in for you. Thank you, Colin. No problem. I know Eric's a good chef, so what's to be nervous about? What do you order? Crab cakes plus filet mignon with gorgonzola medium rare and a shrimp ravioli. Right down. I just love what I do. This is perfect. My food is good, and if he critiques it like I've seen him critique other people's food, I'm going to probably throw it at him. <laughs> what is that? The crab cake. Somebody spit on my plate? What is that on there? That's coolie mango sauce. Oh, coolie mango. Thank you. Is that something out of the modern art museum? Splat. OK. Wow. That's fucking disgusting. He's rancid. Plastic bits of crap running through the crab cakes. Is everything OK? Uh, yeah, the chef sent out a little surprise. I've got bits of plastic running through there. See the plastic? I don't know where it came from, but it's definitely in there. But I I'm done with that. Thanks. OK. Severe warning for what's to come. Eric, you found a piece of plastic in there. Where's that from? I don't know, man. Fuck him. I have no idea where that plastic came from. Just happened to appear. I don't even have a place to get my kids out. The owner sat at the bar watching television, and they wondering why they're not doing well. Hi. Is that Joe's seat there at the end? Yes. All the time. He'll sit there most of the night. Oh, dear. Joe does need to get off his ass and start paying attention. Oh, here's my food. Fantastic. Let me, let me leave you alone to eat, right? Madeline, thank you. Lovely. Thank you. So. Oof. How'd you like the steak? Um, quite tough. Are they always served with raw onions, or? Yeah. Nah. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, you said the beef's a little tough. Just fucking get out of here. There's nothing positive being said. I don't really suck that bad, you know? Go oh dear. That looks like the biggest pile of shit ever to be served in Queens. My god. The raviolis are disgusting. Tart, tannin, and just a mouthful of acidic, thick, rich, creamy sauce that tastes like there's a buzz in your mouth. It just seemed like Chef Ramsay didn't like anything. Excuse me. Oh, God. Oh, dear. This is really bad. I can really start to understand to why Queens is running as fast as it can from PJ's. Disgusted by the food in this beautiful restaurant, Chef Ramsay heads to the problem area, the kitchen. Did you cook everything? Yeah. That was pretty fucking embarrassing. 100% pissed me off that Chef Ramsay didn't enjoy my meal. What's with the coolie? Is that something out of the Modern Art Museum? Splat. Where's that from? From a can. From a can. Disgusting. The steak fillet should melt in your mouth, and it did nothing of the sort. That's what we could afford. Eric, come around so I can talk to you properly. I was shocked. I really thought that Eric's food was a lot better than what Chef Ramsay said it was. The food was shit. I get a lot of compliments, man. A lot. A lot of compliments from where? The place is fucking empty. Who's running the place? For the most part, I am. Oh, please. First of all, I'm here every day. You're not here every day. I'm not here enough to mother him, but I am here. He should be here, but he's not doing it. If you're here really overseeing everything, then these problems aren't going to be here. Get your ass off the bar stool and stand in here and do it every single night. Can you motivate yourself to want to keep the restaurant open? I don't know. But he's given up. I see that myself here. Yeah. I've given up. Guys, I'm fucking sorry, but take one good look at yourselves first. If there's one thing that has to change, it's people's attitude around here. Whether you like it or not, you are restaurateurs. You have the fucking responsibility of making this place work. Yep. But there's too many people turning their back on things that are wrong. I've got to get some fresh air. What a shame. We have absolutely no idea what we're doing here. Just a big disaster. Are we opening for dinner? After a miserable lunch, 
Gordon takes time to sit down with the one person who appears to have not given up, Joe's wife, Madeline. The word PJ, where does that come from? Joe's brother. Joe's brother. Joe's brother owned an Irish bar restaurant here 10 years ago, and he died when it was at its peak. He died? How close were they? They were best friend, and he was very sad. He was empty. Right. I was worried for his welfare. I was worried. And when this place came for rent, he came home and told me about it. So I told him, you know, get the key, and we'll put his brother's name back over the door. And he spent all the money, but uh, it helped him. It's getting to him now, just the money. And, and I think that's why he's at that bar having drinks, because he's looking around. He is embarrassed at how this turned out. And how much did he spend? 1.2 million to build it. What does it need to take per week to break even? About 17 to 18,000. What's it currently running at now? Four. Four thousand. Four thousand dollars. Oh my God. Jesus. Uh, take me back. Joe was very successful before he opened the yes. restaurant. Yeah. In construction. Yes. And and where were you living at the time when it was? When successful? we were successful. Yeah. I designed a house. It was incredible. So you designed your dream house. Yes. But we sold it. You sold the house to keep the business open. Yes. We got rid of everything to stay here. But this restaurant did more for me than my house. It, it brought my husband back. How do you, how do you walk away from that? I, well, I can't. This is unbelievable. Well, that's helped me to understand uh, the background. As much as it has cost us to, to keep this place opened, at the same time, it gave us back Joe. And we just can't let it go. We'll do whatever we have to do to keep this place going. After his chat with Madeline, Gordon has a better understanding of what PJ means to this family. Now he wants to learn more about how the business operates, and there's no better way to do that than watching a dinner service. Hi, good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Thank you. Can I take your coat? Oh, I'm actually real comfortable. You have to leave it here. Okay, can I take these two? As is the case with many of the restaurants that Chef Ramsay visits, the word has spread in the community, and PJ's is much busier than normal. Hmm. I'm not used to being the hostess. How would you like that cooked? How well, please. Well done. Ordering a salmon. Well. I just know what's good, and I know what's bad, and I know I can handle the job, I know I can do the job really well, because my food is good. How are the stuffed mushrooms coming? Talk to me for two seconds. He literally doesn't talk behind the line. He doesn't communicate with me, especially when it's busy. The worst situation in the fucking world. Harry, yes, sir. I've got to talk to them. Come on. At least talk. Cool. Right. What table is this? That's a fuck up, Warren. Eric's lack of communication has the staff waiting for direction and the diners waiting for food. Casper normally wait this long for entrees. Yes. Yeah. It usually takes two hours to eat here. From two hours. Two hours from start to finish. Oh. Eric, they're starting to complain now that there's no food out there. <laughs> Come on, you can do better than this, can't you? You give a shit? Yeah, I give a shit. Come on then, big man. This is a steakhouse, yes? PJ Steakhouse. PJ Steakhouse. Yeah. Pathetic joke. That's what it stands for. Come on, guys. Nobody looks too happy here. I know we haven't got our meals yet. Here we come. Didn't get your dinner yet? No. Okay. For the amount of people we had tonight, it was a ridiculous amount of time they had to wait for the food. That's it. I'm going to drink it. Eric, how long on that 16? Putting it up right now. An hour into dinner service, food is finally leaving the kitchen. Because of the amount of customers, everyone is delivering the food. Even Madeline, Gorgonzola. who is clearly not comfortable with the job. All right. Uh, you have this bit of listen. <laughs> uh, let's go over this, OK? Not a waitress, not a hostess. I only own it. So I know nothing about the food. I am probably the only person who owns a restaurant in the world who wouldn't know what good food is. That's the truth. I, I left that part up to Joe from the beginning. Give me a glass of shiraz. 
It's an hour and a half into dinner service. Table 30, all the apps are in the window. Many customers have received food. This is like really weird. But for most, it wasn't worth the wait. It's really gross. You don't like it? Lemonade. Lemonade. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I'll tell the chef about the chicken. Can you take this off the table, Freddy? Why? You can tell if she didn't like it at all. And what do you want me to do with it? You know what I'm saying? Can we take it off? I'll have a word with them. I went to check the menu. It's chicken Madeira, and I will have them take it off for you. Well, you didn't even recognize it? <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank you. Don't want to make it. Thank you. I just don't know how to have better manners at the table. How long on 23? Salmon and the filet. That salmon's fucked. Come on, guys. Eric, touch the top of that salmon. It's like a bullet. Yeah, it's too over that. It's only going to come back. Chef Ramsay is standing there and catching the mistakes as they're happening. Look at the crap underneath there. Look at that. Eric, that's well done. Everything just feels like it's turning downward. Touch that there. Yeah, that's not medium. It's a disaster. It was horrible to watch it just fall apart. Come on! No, I can't. It's too much for me. Fucking hell. With a restaurant full of unhappy customers... The chicken is chewing. ...and a kitchen falling apart... Look at that. Harry, that's well done. Chef Ramsay has seen enough of the dinner service and heads to the storage area to see what problems lie below. What's that in there? Stuck to the cardboard box. No one gives a shit about. Look. Oh. Oh my god. Look at that. Ah. Oh. What is that? No. No. Oh. That just sums up the whole restaurant. Fading away, rotten, and just one big fucking embarrassment. Ah. Chef Ramsay knows that tonight's dinner service was not lost on Joe and Madeline. Thank you. But he wants to make sure they have a complete picture of the state of the restaurant. Ay, ay, ay. This is so hard, you know that. I've just come to the conclusion that no one gives a fuck. Stay there. When Chef Ramsay walked in that box, I was terrified. This is the big kick in the bollocks. Oh. I'm not here for this. We're using horrible plastic lemon juice in a sauce that a customer complained about, the fact that it tasted of lemon. We've got fresh lemons downstairs that have gone rotten. I just can't believe it. If it was me, I'd be down with a, with a, with a toothbrush. Here's the killer blow for me, just that one there. Dealing with the restaurant and the food and the customers, one thing. But where the fuck do you start with that? It was beyond bad. It's such a lack of pride. It's such a lack of caring. Who knows what the fuck goes on behind our back? I don't know. It is your job to go in that walk-in box and rotate your stock and clean it out. And it's part of our job to make sure he does it. Why should I have to fucking worry about this shit? Is it your business? You can't stand there and be silent anymore, eh? You can't do that. It seems like the whole blame of this whole place is coming down on my shoulders, and it's not all my fault. I'm not the fucking problem here. We're slopping it out, guys. Just get a bag and, and throw it out. I can't believe that shit, can you? How in the name of God? Imagine the waste of food. We're worse to blame, Joe. I had no idea what was in there. I'm very disappointed with Eric. I realized tonight that a lot of the problems in the kitchen is Eric. Definitely a change has to come. The bottom line is nobody around here wants to work. Nobody. Undeterred by a rough day one, Chef Ramsay hits the streets of Forest Hills, armed with a camcorder 
to do some grassroots research on what people really think of PJ's Steakhouse. Yeah, have we got two seconds? Sure. PJ's the Steakhouse. Have you heard of it? Have you been there? I have. It was not a pleasant experience. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. Have you heard of PJ's? Yes. Describe the dinner. Slow, cold, not too good, wouldn't go back. This is incredible. Thank, Thank you. you so much. After hearing what the neighborhood had to say, Chef Ramsay calls the owners and staff to a local theater. Take a seat. We're in this movie theater, and we have absolutely no idea what we're doing there. This is a serious world premiere, and the movie's entitled PJ's, The Word on the Street. Oh, gosh. I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm scared to see what's going to happen. Lights, please. Have you ever been to PJ's? PJ's? I've been there quite often, actually. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. This is incredible. The same shit went on six months ago that I saw last night. How was dinner? Atrocious. Really? That My bad? My son's steak was a hockey puck. I actually recognized two of the customers that was on that tape, and I said, holy shit. I ordered salmon. I got flounder. That's ridiculous. How many people have you told in the last six months not to go there? There's 66 apartments in my building. And you told them all not to go? Yes. It's total bullshit. I wanted to turn around and smack Eric in the mouth. That's how, that's how angry he was. He's behind us, munching on popcorn, but he's grinning his face. What was the food like? Awful. Really? Everything was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible? Yeah, steak chewy, not too flavorful. If you had the chance to change, what would it be? Better food. Better food. That is from the people on the street, and these people are going to keep that place open. My God. I was disgusted with the little movie thing we just saw. I don't believe it's all that true, you know? It's not that bad. Why do you find it funny? We're sat here in an embarrassing situation. It's definitely nothing to laugh about, Eric. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe all of it. It infuriates me. If the food was good, the save was excellent. We have got to start turning this around. Can this restaurant survive with Eric run the kitchen? Devastated but informed by what they heard at the theater, the owners have a clear picture of how PJ's was perceived by the town. But Chef Ramsay has more. Um, there's one big issue. Eric, there's nothing worse than having a chef in the kitchen trying to produce mediocre food. I'm telling you, the engine room is fucked. And if that's not working, nothing's going to work. This business cannot go any further forward with a liability like that. It's just gone to a stage where he should have been gone a long time ago. You realize you're both at fault. Absolutely. Because you're accepting and tolerating yes. the incompetence. And he's taking advantage of your weakness by yes. becoming worse at what he's paid to do. I would like to give him a last chance tonight. I'm going to put him on the spot. I'm going to call it as I say it. Get a grip. Cook your ass off. Or game over for me. Yeah, sounds great. Tonight will be Eric's last chance to save his job. So Chef Ramsay has made a few menu changes to help the kitchen keep up. OK, tonight, we have to start building a reputation up. So we're going to offer a mixed grill. We've got the amazing thighs of chicken, steak, beautifully done on the broiler, a little mini slider, tomato, roasted, lamb sausage, sautéed mushrooms, fries and onion rings. Introducing a mixed grill to say thank you to the neighborhood and welcome back and, and give us a shot. Such a brilliant idea. That is our special this evening. I know not one steakhouse this evening anywhere in Queens is serving a beautiful mixed grill. I love it. You don't get that anywhere. That's great. Eric, anything on there you can't do? I can do it all. You can do it all? OK, I need Eric, Madeline, and Joe. Two seconds, please, yes? This is what I do. Let me do what I do. OK. Eric, one thing I need to see is the timing. The timing has to be absolutely spot on. Tonight's your night. You have to show me that. You have to fucking show me. It's time for Eric to step up to the plate tonight, or there's no room for him here. OK, you're the owners. Who's running it tonight? I am. What are you doing tonight? Salads. Salads. I don't want to see you anywhere near the fucking bar. Run it. Run it, run it, run it. OK? Let's go. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Table four? Yeah. yeah. Follow me. We have our grill for two tonight. Have fun, please. Smile a lot. Smile. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. 
called our PJ's Mixed Grill. It has a flank steak on it. It has lamb sausage. Comes with grilled chicken. With that's your flank steak right there. Would you like to start out with one of those? Yeah. So what can I get you tonight? Mixed Grill. Mixed Grill special. Thank you. Thanks. This is unbelievable. Already there's a renewed energy going on, and this mixed grill has got them sort of excited, but I know it's early days. However, the big pressure is on Eric and Madeline. She has to run a business, and he has to be consistent in the kitchen. Otherwise, it's fucking history. A strip, a half rack, two fillet. You got a tomato and much salad, Joe. We got a rock tonight. You ready, bro? It's nice to see my husband off the bar stool, on his feet, and back to work. You just have an order? Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. Eric, when we start to send the mixed grill, what I want to do is see half the table in the window without the other half coming at the same time. Yes, Chef. Excellent, thank you. It makes me feel confident when I can hear a chef's voice behind me. You know that? Yes, Chef. Joe, I'm ready for that tomato mozzarella. Tomato mozzarella. Steak medium. Slider. Just That's lettuce it. and tomato. I need to pick up over here at PJ's Mixed Grill. With Joe and Eric working together, Food is leaving the kitchen at a good pace. Here we are. And now, the first mixed grill special is hitting the table. When the first mixed grill started to go out, you know, you could see people in the dining room looking over and getting excited. How's everything look? It's really cold. Everything's cold? This is cold and this is cold. All right, I'm sorry about that. That steak is so great. I'll be right back. I'm fucking believable. Mushrooms are cold, sausage is cold. It's That's supposed it? to be medium. Oh, come on. Eric, it's the first one. It's the first fucking table. Come on, Eric, please, yeah? Don't let me down, yes? Pick up on that PJ's Mixed Grill. Ordering a salmon. We got a PJ's Mixed Grill. We got a calamari first. The Mixed Grill special is extremely popular, with 21 orders already taken. I need to pick up over here at table 12. The kitchen has pushed out 14 of them in a hurry. Thank you. Now it's time to find out if Chef Ramsay's dish, cooked by Eric, is satisfying the customers. How is everything? I mean, that's terrible. I'm sorry. It's freezing cold. And it was raw. Some pinkishness in the chicken. I will be right back, okay? Is everything okay? It's ice cold and. All right, I'm, I'm very sorry. sorry about that. I'll take it right back. Can you change that for like the fillet uh, or something? He doesn't like it. Okay. It's just dry. I'll be right back. What's wrong with it? it? Needs to be. He said it's cold. Oh, oh come on. Madeline, does that chicken look pink to you? Yeah, very. Just watch it one time, Madeline. Everything's coming back. Uh, I'm so fucking lost, man. He hates it. Oh, come on. This is getting worse than last night. Eric couldn't cook a sausage. It, it was sad. What's going on here, guys? There's one simple fucking dish on there to make things look somewhat easier. Yeah, real fucking simple. Come there. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen it this bad. I don't care anymore. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It's an hour into dinner service, and with food coming back at a ridiculous rate... He hates it. Oh, come on. And Eric completely giving up... I don't care anymore. Chef Ramsay knows he is left with just one choice. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It was his last shot, and he didn't perform. It's a serious problem. No lie, our chef walked out. They're shutting down the kitchen. After shutting down dinner service, Chef Ramsay calls an emergency meeting with the owners. You cannot continue like this. I'm trying my best. And I cannot work with no tools in there. He's a cook, but he's not a chef. There's a lot of money invested here. And if I have to choose between a future and a chef, I have to choose the business. He needs to go. We need a new kitchen leader. It was a no-brainer. Please give me a real chef. I am willing to bring a chef in here and pay personally for that chef to help turn this business around for the first month. But that's your decision. You can't ask for more than that. You're the owners, and it's your call. It's in the morning. We had to make a quick decision. We couldn't let her linger on. We had to rip the band-aid off, you know? Come outside. At this point in time, if I don't do something, it's not going to be here at all. I can't lose a million dollars. You know what? I think it's all fucking bullshit. We should go whatever direction we have to go in. What you gotta do? That's all I can tell you. What you gotta do? We 
gotta move on, my friend. If my shit's not good enough, let him find somebody else, because I'm fucking done with it. It's time for a 360, you know? Getting rid of Eric, it was tough. But what's best for the restaurant is the way I'm gonna go. He's not the only thing that has to change here. He definitely is not the only thing. I need to get back on my feet and start paying attention to the business. And Joe does also. It's got to be becoming about keeping this place open and money. Joe and I need to keep this place going. Giving a golden opportunity. With Chef Eric now out of the picture, Chef Ramsay is ready to present his plan for the new PJs. How are we feeling? Great. It's been a tough week, yes? Time to put all that aside. This is not just a new chapter. This is a new book. Are you ready? Yes? The steakhouse has closed. PJ's Grill is now open. Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Inviting, sumptuous, rich, is clear. PJ's Grill. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's perfect for the neighborhood. Right, should we go inside? Yeah. Yes? Let's go. The important part of keeping PJs, absolutely <gasps> crucial. Oh, my God, Joe. This area here is dedicated to him. Now it has a proper meaning. And more importantly, what a lovely tribute. It's beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye, you know? It's a good reminder of why this place is called PJ's. I feel PJ's presence here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madeline, Joe, two seconds. Want to introduce you to your new chef. This is Mark, Mark Hi. Elliott, Madeline, the owner. Lovely to meet you. And Mark. Joe, the owner. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we're excited Good. to Mark have you. Likewise, Mark. I'm just so excited. I just can't wait to taste his food. I just can't wait to see the reaction of the customers. He knows his food inside out, and he knows how to cook. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story I'll explain later. <laughs> just having someone new and professional with ideas in this restaurant, it'll motivate and turn things around. With Joe and Madeline embracing Chef Ramsay's plan, right. he now introduces the new menu for PJ's Grill. Time for some dramatic change with the food. I'm excited about this part. This is the bit that really gets me fired up. Quick run through the menu, yes? Small, fresh, casual, and more importantly, fast. Irish stew, chicken scallopini, classic, OK? Steak Fred, we're a grill. So we've got the most amazing grill, the most amazing steak Fred. OK, happy? Good. Madeline, I need two seconds with you, please. Sure. Yeah? Come with me, my darling. Good. Excellent. It's one last change what i need to see from you tonight more than anything is just walk with the customers i want the burden off your shoulders tonight and the only way around that okay was to bring in someone very special and he's someone i trust with my restaurant this man handles 250 staff a day and he's here tonight to help you Hello, Aaron. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? Good. When you're worried about what's going to happen next or what to say next or how to handle that situation, there's your buffer. Don't be scared to ask questions and get out there with it. OK? All right. Chef Ramsay loans his manager to train me. Is this unbelievable? I only hope we perform with the faith he's given us, you know? Otherwise, that's the end of it. It's the big night, and this restaurant has been transformed in 24 hours from a steakhouse to a neighborhood grill. Even though Chef Ramsay has brought in a new chef. OK. Yeah, we chef. Feeling good. And his own manager. OK. Are we all set? PJ's fate still rests with Madeline and Joe. You know, it's a fantastic face and make him a nice smile. Just make sure we keep them talking and don't leave them kind of standing there staring at you. This is a huge night for PJ's because People are coming back here for the first time. They're going to sit down to hopefully a new Madeline and Joe. We need this launch to go well. Otherwise, you know, we'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. How are you guys doing? 
Yeah. Delighted yeah. to have you with us, okay? Enjoy your evening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thirty minutes into dinner service, a surprise guest from the past shows up. Hi, good evening. How are you? Welcome to PJ's. I know you. Do you? I do. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago. I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. The service, terrible. If you have any problems, please ask for Madeline right away. Madeline. I was shocked that he's back for a surprise visit, and I hope that we won't disappoint him. Enjoy. Please. <laughs> this guy has a lot of negative feedback about the restaurant. Is this the young couple that just walked in, is it? Yes. Make sure Gordon and the chef know. Table 10. People might have eaten here before they were in your film, yep. actually. So previous customers, they complained last time they were here. So watch that ticket, yeah? Yeah. Let's go. Hi, how are you? I probably might recommend the mixed grill. The grill does look kind of interesting. We're going to try the uh, mixed grill. Thank you. All right, first order, stuffed mushrooms, house salad, house salad. Three of mixed grill. That's going to be the hit tonight, kids. So there are two different temperatures on one mixed grill. Yeah, Can I'm we... going to cut the steak in half and leave half of it in there a little bit longer. I love that flexibility. Music to my fucking ears. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How are we doing, guys? Very good. How's that stew? Good. You guys have to get this next time. We'll come back with this. This is awesome. With the kitchen functioning in a cohesive and professional manner. Isn't that good? Oh, that's good. Madeline, you won. Madeline is about to get her first of many lessons in proper management. Madeline. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? It's ridiculous. Cut it out. Don't go. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. That's it. That's your last break. I didn't get the break. I never left. OK, go chase your waiters. Let's find out. Come on. And it was following me everywhere. So we need to go find out the kitchen, what we have, what we don't have. There's no one there. Let's get back in. Let's check on this table four. I didn't realize how many places you had to be. OK, where are we going now with that? Uh... get a bus board. How was everything, guys? That was fine. Very good. Dinner service is off to a strong start. I'm going to find out what's happening with table 10. But the former customers, whose opinion signifies whether PJ's has really changed. Did you eat anything yet? Has yet to be served. You haven't been fed yet. I'll be right back. Before this critical customer walks out the door, Madeline must get her kitchen under control. Table 10, you haven't been fed yet. Dick, that actually went to table 9. Fucking hell. Who's sending food to the wrong tables, guys? Take care of it. Thank you, man. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, Jesus Christ, the mic. Table 10. We're just a little behind right now. OK, chef, they're starving. So they need something, and they need it now. Thank you, Mark. Let's go. Please take a breath. Take the pressure off. Don't worry. Working hard. Give me two minutes. You OK? Beautiful, baby. Flank steak, a slider, grilled chicken. Woo, that's beautiful. Yes. Come here, pick up. Mixed grill window. Let's not take this to the wrong table a second time, please. Really well handled with them. Really well handled in the kitchen. Thank you. Here we are. Hi, how are you? How's everything? It's really good now. I think it's going to be great. I hope this is going to be a place I can make more Thank you. They're happy with the new menu. They're happy with the food. He said he was definitely coming back. Oh, it makes me feel so good. So good. So please enjoy your dinner. Thank you. Everyone loves everything, man. Hey, you know what? It's all for you, Joe. <laughs> You're a different person when you have confidence in your chef. Everybody is rocking and rolling. Nice job across the board. I was actually very proud to be uh, owner of PJ's Grill. Chef Ramsay's vision of PJ's Grill was realized. How'd you feel? Great. It was a team effort that was led by the new chef, Madeline, and Joe. Tonight? PJ's Grill served 90 customers who love the food and, more importantly, are coming back because they've had a great time. The difference just with a decent chef in the kitchen doing his job that he's paid to do, what a weight off your shoulders. But the most important thing is I saw two owners who were passionate, happy and dealing with their business. What Chef Ramsay's done here is incredible. I don't really know how he knew how to go to the heart of Joe, but he did. It's just been unreal. It's like I just got a, a fire back, you know? I haven't felt that way in a long time. This is the first time 
and a lot of years, I feel my brother's looking down on me, you know? Look over my shoulder. You can do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. During my stay here, it's been dark, rainy, and gloomy. And I'm not just talking about the weather. But based on what I saw tonight in this restaurant, I seriously hope that tomorrow the sun shines on PJ's Grill and into the future, because it deserves it. After Chef Ramsay left, PJ's business did improve. But after a great deal of thought, Joe and Madeline made the most difficult business decision of their life. They decided to close PJ's Grill and return to the construction business. Ridgewood, New Jersey, an affluent suburb well known for the sheer volume of restaurants. Smack in the middle of this pleasant town is a five-year-old restaurant run by a former Manhattan star chef, Paul Bazzini. I'm a very good chef. We got a full diner room, drop another pan for four more. Here we go. I've always been in the industry and worked my way up and became executive chef and worked in many places in Manhattan that had a lot of notoriety. I love you. Oh, love you too. Paul has been recognized many times throughout his career. He has been written up in several magazines with some very positive reviews, and I absolutely thought the restaurant was going to be a success. But Paul never anticipated the transition from star chef to owner would be so difficult. I don't have any focus these days. I wake up in the morning and I say, what direction should I go in today? Should I cook? Should I shop? Should I work in the front of the house? Should I work on marketing? Should I pay bills? And it's like overwhelming. It's killing me. I think the pressure of owning the restaurant has definitely beat him down, and his passion for food is not burning as brightly as it once was. Clearly, what's going on with me in the kitchen is suffering. Here's your salad. What salad to what table? I'm confused. I'm confused. Yeah, New York ship, New York ship, New York. Okay, you're, you're right. I am distracted. I am frustrated. I'm angry. Always somebody. Always somebody. Always somebody. And then I'm frustrated with the food, and I'm slamming plates on because the plate doesn't look the way that I want it to look. It's messy, but let's just right. go with it, OK? The risotto was burnt. I don't know, is it supposed to be spicy? A lot of complaints. Yeah, so I heard. I don't feel like me. I feel like somebody else. I feel like me looking at somebody else. Everyone knows that he's just not good about criticism. This needs to be heated up. These are perfect. OK. He gets pissed off, and he yells. I don't have all the tickets memorized. Why? Well, that's why you have a ticket. Yeah, OK. Do you think if you had a lot of money, you wouldn't be so goddamn moody? <sighs> I support the restaurant financially, certainly. If I didn't do that, we would have been bankrupt years ago. There's no magic ATM machine like in the backyard, like a magic money tree that I can just go pick money from. There are no college funds for our children. Every day, I'm scared that we're not going to be able to pay the bills. We need help. We need direction. We need advice. And my resume and all of my accolades don't mean a hill of beans if I can't make it work here. His passion for cooking defines him, and I feel like it's lost to him right now. He needs to get it back. over 60 restaurants within four blocks inside this beautiful town. Now, after seeing a few of them, my mouth is watering. I can't wait for lunch. Right, Bazzini's Innovative American Cuisine. What? No. Am I too late? Bazzini's, hours, Monday to Thursday, 5 till 9.30. Shit. No lunch. That's ridiculous. Hi, Paul Gordon here. Where are you? Call me. Unbelievable. Hello? Hi, may I speak to Chef Ramsay, please? Is that Paul? Hi, this is Paul Bazzini. How are you? Sorry, I missed you. I didn't realize you were closed for lunch. Uh, yes, sir. We're closed for lunch. OK, I'm on my way. I'm starving. How are you? Hi, welcome to Bazzini's. Chef Ramsay, pleasure to meet you. Gordon. Gordon, Paul, pleasure to meet you. Nice to see you too. Thank wow, you. Wow, this is minute, isn't it? It's challenging. <laughs> my goodness me. Is this it? Yes, sir. Wow. It's like being inside a doll's house. 
it, it, it's uh, some decor challenges here. Well, you're here. Yes, sir. Finally, I'm here. Okay. Um, uh, clearly, there's nothing else going on uh, lunch-wise. Why don't you cook me something? Okay. Yeah? Don't show me the menu. You decide. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. I have to just, you know, focus on, like, the food. Will it be to his taste? Will it be to his opinion? Who knows? This place makes me feel nervous. It's small, it's cramped, and no wonder they're closed for lunch. God, it's so narrow. Look at this place. From one table to the next. Huh? Oof. God, they're grimy. Oh, shit. That's depressing. Oh. <laughs> Entree comes with sound effects. Maybe he'll blow me away with the food because the atmosphere. Mm. My God, it's depressing. I'm thinking that I want to send out just a, 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 just a few light dishes to him. Something hot, something cold, something grilled, something sautéed. Just a, a full rounded experience. Hey, Paul. I'm here yes. to help. Hey, how's it going? What you got? Good. I think Chef Ramsay's going to have a lot of things to say to Paul about how to change things, and I don't think Paul's going to take it well. The gentleman said he was very hungry, so... Fair enough. I think Paul has his own ideas that what he's doing is just right, doesn't need to be changed, and uh, I think some of those things do need to be changed. Here we go. That is the fettuccine. Mm -hmm. Basil arugula pesto, a little mm -hmm. ricotta salada on top. What? And then behind that, here is a chicken paillard, a sort of milanese, pounded, mm -hmm. breaded. Excellent. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. My name's Alex. Alex. Charmed. Good to see you. Excellent. Pleasure. I'll be back in a moment. Thank you, Alex. Cold. Bland. Really bland. OK. Look at this thing. It's like a fucking elephant's foot. Mm. That's not normal for a chicken to be so fucking hard. Fuck. That's the mess. Thank you, Alex. Absolutely. And um, I'd appreciate if the chef could actually taste that. OK. Because it is bland beyond bland. OK. And um, why is that so dry? Hmm. I wish I had a good answer for that question. Chicken should be moist. Well, I'll move straight to the next course. Thank sure. you. Sure. Fettuccine. Bland. Chicken. Why is it so dry? That's bullshit. I want to go home. Paul certainly doesn't like it when people criticize his food, but, you know, I think he actually reacted to Chef Ramsay's criticisms the same way he reacts to a lot of the guests' criticisms. Like, maybe it's not necessarily that important, because he's right. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well. I'm Leslie Bazzini. Mm, nice to see you, Lily. Nice to see Just you. Li likewise. Thank you for coming. Not at all, I really Leslie. appreciate your help. It means well, a lot to us that you're here. I don't want to get emotional, but thank you. I'm very happy to be here, and, uh... Can I give you a hug? Of course you can have a hug. Feel better? Yeah. Here is someone who has the ability to help us, and, um, he's going to. You know, that's a miracle. OK, great. Well, I'm going to finish my, uh, lunch. Yes, absolutely. Thank um, you. thank you. Thank you. Hi, Alex. Hello. Lovely. Thank you. Here we are. Okay, that is our mushroom risotto. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. Damn, is that normal? Amazing Bazzini's risotto. Ooh, wow, well, that's extraordinary, no? It doesn't even move. Well, maybe that'll look better up there. Yeah. It fits the colours. Come on. Oh. What a mess. And absolutely disgusting. So, you don't look too impressed. I just taste of mush. Thank you, Alex. Well, yeah. <laughs> My pleasure. I'll bring you some tilapia next. Mm -hmm. Nah, he doesn't like that. <laughs> he doesn't like it? Too mushy. There is a classic, you know, way to do it, but some people around here just don't like it that way, you know? My ego's not here to hear that Gordon Ramsay loved the dishes or didn't like the dishes. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about what I do and how, what the product that, that I put out. It's all yours, Alex. All right, here we go. Thank you. Almond crusted tilapia, jasmine rice with some pepper. Hopefully you enjoy it. Wow. Look at that. Boo, huh? I love the jasmine rice. He has to like the jasmine rice. Hmm. It's just so bland, honestly. I mean, it's just greasy, bland, and you cut into the fish and it's just mush. How is the tilapia coming along? Hmm. We're making some forward progress here. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, do you know what? I'm, uh, I'm still hungry. Um, do you have something in mind? Uh, any desserts? Certainly. Sharon, our dessert chef, makes everything. Got a, I've got a carrot cake. Oh, wow. Should be a New York cheesecake. Do you know what? I have a little slice of the cheesecake and the mm -hmm. carrot cake. Done. Please. Yes, cheesecake, carrot cake. Swap, yeah, no go. Fish was bland. Watery. Fish was bland? Again, we're, we're kind of like, we have an older clientele here. They like nod to assertive okay. things. Right. How could I think that Paul did a good job? You know, if he did a good job, Chef Ramsey would have said the food was great. You know, he didn't say that, so Paul didn't do a good job. We'll start right here with a carrot cake. Wow, all homemade. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Hi. Gordon's eating your carrot cake right now as we speak. Oh, Ivey. The last thing that people eat is dessert. And if the dessert sucks, that's bad. Oh, you scared me. Don't come around the corner like that. Sharon. <laughs> Sharon. First of all, that is delicious. Awesome. Uh, whose recipe is that? Mine. Can I have it? No, if for a price, everything for a price. For a price. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. That's made <laughs> with passion. As much as you have. You make love to that carrot cake, you, don't you? Well, I'm getting divorced, so it's the cake oh. or... Uh... <laughs> I'll go for the cake. Hope he likes it. Sharon's going to be devastated if he hates it. I hate it. I'm so glad you liked it. Honestly, I thought like it's a fucking wake in a funeral, and all of a sudden the carrot cakes arrive and woof, and back up there. I love you! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Although dessert left Chef Ramsay with a good taste in his mouth, it still doesn't erase the bad taste of the rest of the meal. Let's talk about the food. Dessert. Let's get backwards. OK. <laughs> yeah. That was delicious. Good. Glad yeah. you enjoyed it. Really good. Yeah, um, sure. Great way to finish. Clearly, but I certainly didn't start off like that. I said to you, show me your best. Give it to me big time. The risotto was embarrassing. Paul, it tasted the way it looked. Damn, is that normal? Bland, mushy, and it looked atrocious. Honestly, it was fucking disgusting. The chicken. How many days were you baking that for? Seriously, I mean, you may laugh, but it's not funny. Honestly, I thought I'd lost my tooth. It was so crunchy on the outside. Dry in the middle. It wasn't intended to be dry or to be overcooked. Uh, you sent it out. I know that. That's the way you normally cook it, overdone. I certainly yeah. don't think that I cook food overdone. OK. I mean, it's Risotto not overcooked, intent. chicken overcooked. You certainly did for me. OK. I, I need to get some fresh air. I'm going to come back later. I'm here tonight. Show it to me. OK. Hopefully this time with a little bit more effort. OK. Did you think that he was going to like it? It angers me that Paul has given up because I haven't given up. You're like dead. Well, I want the nightmare to be over. This former Manhattan star chef failed to impress Chef Ramsay at lunch. Now it's time for Chef Ramsay to see how Paul handles the customers of Ridgewood, New Jersey in a dinner service. All right, guys, we got to get ready. I hope Paul could get his shit together. The food is there, the capability is there. You just have to do it. It's like you have to shit or cut off the pot. Hello, good evening. Can I take your wine? You may. Oh, you just got him. Oh, there you go. Thank you. And this is Al. Al, good nice to see you. To You're a sous chef, right? Yes. This kitchen's like a fucking shoebox in here. Oh, yeah, I know. Holy crap. I think Chef Ramsay doesn't realize that I worked with a lot of very well-known chefs. It's not intimidating. I have the talent, the desire, and I definitely can do the job. Crab cakes across the board, so for this risotto. You smell good. I smell good. Aftershave. Sharon, are you hitting on me? No, I like no? the aftershave. It smells Thank nice. You. Oh, now you just brush your ass off me. No, I'm not. Gordon is adorable. And of course, he's got quite the butt. <laughs> I'm sorry. Order in. The crab cakes are ready. OK, thank you. How come they're cooked already? They're pre-seared. You what sear a crab cake? No. We pre-sear yeah. the crab cake, and then it goes into the oven. No, hold on a minute. Why wouldn't you do that to order? For it to expedite it out a little bit faster. But surely it'll take longer to get yes. hotter once it's already cooked. I, yes. Is it me or does that not make sense? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Here is your crab cake, sir. May I get you any fresh pepper on that? Uh, no, thank what? you. No? How strange. How are they doing in the There's kitchen? There's a bucket of 
crab cakes that just go into the oven to be reheated. But they were seared off like yesterday. Did you know they were done there the day before? Of course not. Mm. I thought everything was fresh. Everything. I feel like Paul is losing his artistry and that he doesn't care. It's not affecting him. It not only pains me, it, it angers me, quite frankly. I mean, that's just not OK. Yeah, it's all burned on the side. All I can taste is the, is the food. It's burned. Is it really? Is yeah. everything OK with your crab cakes, sir? It's not burned. It's over. OK. Yeah, let me get that back to you. No problem. I need another crab cake on the fly. What do they say? I was burnt. Burnt? Yeah, there's two more. We're about to go out. Please tell me you're not going to serve them. No, I'm not, Chef. We had issues with the crab cakes tonight. It's not the right way to do it. It should be done a different way. And I know how to do it a different way. But that's not how it was done. That it's not. It's, it's not. fucking disgusting. Yes, it do is. something about it, please, yes. Paul, yeah? Okay. He's a garbage. This is not a reflection of the way that I want things to be, OK? So how are we going back there, right? I'll go check for you. <laughs> it's an hour into dinner service, and very little food has left the kitchen. So, no, three hours. Around 29 of bread. So hungry. In order to get an accurate picture of the slowdown... That's not ready? There's no potatoes on it, honey, okay? Chef Ramsay times how long cooked food sits at the pass. I just think I eat, like, nine loaves of bread just sitting here waiting for our food. OK, four minutes. That's that there. I'm steak. Oh, that's still there. Yes, I'm working on everything. Everything is working. Hey, let me bring some food out there. I, yeah, but she have her. Yeah. Paul is communicating, but most of his communication is that he can't handle it, and it's going too fast. We're going to have to leave, though. Yeah, no, all joking aside. Just yeah, no, it is a little bit. Like, a little, yeah. OK, these people are going to leave if I don't get this one out. He decides how fast things come out. I don't know why it takes so long. I just know it takes so long. They have to be sat there. That makes it fun. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, table 32 can now go. Thank you. You're welcome. Finally. Yes. And now, after a long wait... Those potatoes look a little overdone. The customers... It's cold. ...aren't satisfied. Okay, no problem. I'll send that back for you. Okay, thank you. No problem. Paul? What's wrong? Yeah. Uh, it's cold. Oh, come on. Oh, it's the light. I've certainly become annoyed with clients, and I feel like, you know, people that want to give you criticism, they just don't know, like, what you're going through, and if they just knew, like, a little bit of what you were going through, they might be a little bit more compassionate, but it's not a compassionate business. Is this going, Paul? I'm just worried about food coming back cold, and this is sat here. I was told that the salads would be ready. I'm waiting for the salads. Take half of that salad off, please. What are you building, a fucking Christmas tree? Half of that. No, half. The plates don't look the way they should when I don't do them. Well, when I put them... Just take half of the salad off, please. Follow my directions. I'm going to help you, OK? I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. Contrary to what everybody says, I do know a few fucking things. Oy vey. Easy to sum up Paul's moods. If he were a woman, he would have PMS 24-7, OK? So let me demo a chicken milanese for the 400th fucking time, which is nothing more than chicken and salad, and my 12-year-old can fucking do it. Yeah, listen, don't push it, Paul. When I don't put it high enough, you yell at me that it's not freaking high enough. Why do you have to make it so difficult for it? Why, can't we, why, no, can't, why, why can't we just finish this chicken milanese and make this particular chicken milanese a right one? Not talking about okay, yesterday, Paul. not All talking right. about next month, but what's with the fucking sarcasm? How why about, can't how about, if you tell me you do it one fucking way? How about seven? Then you're changing it. What the fuck you want from me? Changing it right. Well, you told me the first fucking time. Why do you have to make it so difficult for it? Why uh -huh. can't we? The Why battle to get food out tonight has resulted in a war in the kitchen. And make, but what's with the fucking sarcasm? What the fuck you want from me? And the impact is being felt in the dining room. Get my food now. Who's waiting for um, one? 34 has been waiting for like an hour. I know. So. This big table behind me, what are they waiting on? Whose table is that? Julie's. How long are they waiting on trays? Over an hour. Yeah, it's all over an hour. This is not normal, surely. No. no. Tonight is the worst dinner service that I have ever seen. I mean, I have never experienced anything like this in my life. OK, uh, Paul. Yes, sir. I don't know what's happened, but the level of frustration out there is intense. Okay. So stop. We can't continue like this. Stop it. Will you apologize to the tables, please, Rebecca? What a freaking disaster. Bad, I know. It was a terrible night. We had people not get food when tickets were here. We failed tonight. It's my responsibility. Sorry, my friends. The kitchen has been shut down. 
I'm so sorry. I've never had to do this before. I've never shot anything like that in my life. I understand that. Do you think that I like this? Do you think that I want it to be like this? I don't. But... But what? I'm one person with two hands. Paul, you don't... Please don't start with excuses. That's not gonna help. Paul had a horrible night, 100% off his game, and I think gave up before he even got started. But people hated the food. Well, that's not what we got back here. <sighs> I am very angry saying that someone liked something. 50 people didn't like it. Open your eyes. I have nothing else to say to you. Equally as miserable as tonight's dinner service was Paul's attitude, and Chef Ramsay wants to know why. Tonight showed me that you hated cooking. I cannot ignite that little button. Jeff. I need to see it from you. Jeff, I feel awful. I, this is not the way that I want to work or the way that I know that I can work. Why are you doing it to yourself? I, I... Why? You've got like... to give me the answer because I can't start helping until you tell me. But I mean... No one's asking you to rant and rave. I'm just asking you to have some fire. It's not normal for a guy that's been cooking for 20 years plus to stand there with no feel or passion and send shit like that as if it's just going over your head. Whether you like it or not, you have given up. Your whole family is on the line here. Do you know how hard it is to look at my kids when I go home at night? Or my wife? It's not easy, OK? supposed to be easy. I don't care if it's not easy. I just want it to be better. But don't stop trying. Think I'm happy? I'm miserable. I don't want to get out of bed in the morning. I want to stay in bed. OK, listen. I'm committed to helping you, and I'm not leaving this place until it's set. We are going to work at this together at turning this around. Tomorrow, I want you at your best. Yes? Yes. Get some sleep. Thank you. Good night. Good night. After an emotionally draining night, Chef Ramsay has a task in mind to help ignite Paul's passion in the kitchen. Good morning. Hello. Uh, new day. New attitude, new start. So, last night, it took us an hour, on average, to get appetizers out. So here's what we're doing today. I want you to get used to the time pressure. You see what I'm saying? Like, sort of, you know, yeah. kick-starting the fucking car again, oh. you know, like, a new battery in it. <laughs> You've got 15 minutes yep. from now yep. to cook me oh, God, a stunning yeah. pasta dish. Off you go. Oh, you're trying to kill me. You can do it, huh? 15 minutes. Go, Paul. Go. <laughs> In order for Paul to impress Chef Ramsay, this chef is making fresh pasta for the first time in five years. I just want to be able to do what I know how to do it. Just, you know, just cook from the heart and uh, get back to raising the bar for myself. What are you going to make? I'm just getting a lay to land. That's you all. Yeah, 14 minutes. And the clock is ticking, and it's just, you know, like everything around me was just turned off. Like I wasn't hearing or seeing or feeling or worrying. It was just, you know, I was living in the moment. 10 minutes, babe. He's sitting, he's ready, he's waiting to be served. You could totally, totally wow him right now, please. I was watching everything that he did, and I was definitely afraid that Chef Ramsay wasn't going to like it and, and what that would mean. We carry it out. I'll carry it out. You sure you want to do that? Yes. All right. Hey. Here we go. Chef. Thank you. You're welcome. We have a capellini pasta with a chunky puntaresca sauce and some rock shrimp. Lovely. Well, I used to be a good chef. I think I'm still a good chef. I would just want him to be able to recognize that there was a, a passion that went into making this. Chef Ramsay has put Paul's passion for cooking to the test. We have a capellini pasta with a puntaresca sauce. Lovely. Now it's time to find out if he passed. I would hope that Chef Ramsay would recognize that, you know, some love went into making this dish. Will it be to his taste? Who knows? Mmm. That's nice. Capellini. Cooked perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, it just felt good to just have a really positive comment from Chef Ramsay. I really needed that lift. What does pasta mean to you? 
To me, it's like bread, it's stuff of life. Mm -hmm. Pasta can be anything. You can go through all different flavors, textures, yep. proteins, colors. You yep. can have dried pasta, fresh pasta. It's a blank canvas. It's, you know, it's, it's just something for yep. the artist to paint. You sounded more exciting in the last two minutes talking about pasta than you have done since I've met you. It was the old Paul. He was excited, he was energized. It was the man that I married. And it's really weird, isn't it? It takes something like a pasta dish to sort of ignite how you feel about it. Absolutely. Today, at this moment, I know that, like, the healing process has begun. After a small glimmer of hope this morning, Chef Ramsay wants to try an experiment. Time for some sophisticated marketing. He wants to take advantage of the Ridgewood foot traffic and test Paul's speed in the kitchen. How are you? So for the first time in four years, Bazzini's is open for lunch. Having lunch today? Fabulous lunch menu around the corner, Bazzini's, $15. Soup salad and the most amazing pasta. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now Chef Ramsay only has one thing left to do, tell the owners. So here's what we're doing today. We're going to serve the most amazing two-course lunch. That's right. This is not a formal, long-winded, three-hour ordeal. This is a really nice, easy, quick, vibrant lunch. I'm nervous, but, you know, this is what we're going to do today. Fantastic. You know, great. But, you know, terrific. You and I in the kitchen? Great. I'm your sous chef. OK, fantastic. I'm your bitch. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Ladies, you've both got great personalities. So both of you running the front of house. I don't know anything about the front of the house. I don't care about the front of the house. I just want to do my job. Great service, great food, in and out. Hello, welcome. Uh, follow me, please. Chef Ramsay is hoping today's lunch will show Paul and Leslie the opportunity they are not taking advantage of. I'll have the pasta special. The Fantina pasta. And the power of serving fresh pasta. Soup three, panzanella two. OK, good, let's go. Two soups are going in the window, chef, to go up with two salads. Salads, 30 seconds, Paul. Very good, thank you. Don't forget, speed today, yes? Yep. Order in one soup, two orecchiette. Two panzanella. Three vegetable orecchiette, three regular orecchiette. Very good. Oh, waitressing is totally not my thing. I'll be right with you, folks. You girls OK? We're just waiting on our wine. Oh. Um, garlic. Oh, my pen's not writing. I'm sorry. Sharon and I are not servers. We did the best that we could. Is everything OK? Do I get spoons, too? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. But we forgot that you need a spoon to eat soup. Where's the spoon? Why are you asking me? Oh, God help me. Oops. I'm sorry. Service! Manage with that. Thank you. That looks great. Enjoy it. Next entree is what? Two orecchiettes, one vegetarian orecchiette. It was great working with Gordon today. You know, we worked together, we jumped around. It was good. It was like a good two-man, you know, vibe. It felt good, you know? It felt real good. With Chef Ramsay and Paul working together. You got four vegetarian, I got five normal, yes? Four vegetarian on the way. Excellent. Beautifully cooked fresh pasta is flying out of the kitchen. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. There you go. Gosh, this is so good. So this is like the best pasta I've ever like, Friends and stuff your mom makes. And you're in and out in no time? Mm-hmm. How is it? Very good. Good. Very good. Very good. Very good, I'm glad. The kitchen did everything right today. That's it, the board is cleared, yeah? Yeah. I don't have any tickets. You're Anyone good need food? Go. No food. I absolutely think lunch should be an everyday thing at Bazzini. I think that uh, today probably proved that to Paul. It was a great lunch service. It was really good. It was profitable, and we, we, you know, we made money, and uh, customers were happy, and it was quick, and it was easy. Feel good. Inspired by Paul's performance during lunch and his fresh pasta, Chef Ramsay and his team work overnight to renovate the restaurant. Morning. Hey, hey morning. morning. Welcome to the new Pazzini. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Look at it. New trellising, new sign. It looks inviting. It's gorgeous. In a neighborhood with 60 restaurants, you have to stand out. It looks spectacular. Awesome. Yeah. The trellis just looks beautiful. Ready to go inside? Yes. yes. Let's go. I have ants in my pants. Oh, oh my look God. at 
want this. The tables are gorgeous. I love these tchotchkes. Look at that. That's that awesome. That is so nice. Gone is a lemon pound cake on the walls. New slick Italian bonquettes. Is that lovely? It's just modern. It looks great. The color is contemporary. Look at the napkins. Fresh wow. pasta made daily. Welcome to Bazzini. This is freaking awesome. The dining room is beautiful. I never thought in a million years this could happen. And um, we are so grateful. Thank you again. Thank you. Oh, good one, darling. I'm glad you're happy. The restaurant renovation was drastic, but the biggest change to Bazzini's is the menu. Chef Ramsay has taken the old risotto, the disgusting chicken, and the bland tilapia, and replaced them with a new and vibrant menu, featuring fresh pasta. Love the menu. From 27 dishes down to 15. Why is it reduced? Because it's fast. The idea is everything's cooked to order. It's fresh. Char-grilled calamari with fresh chili and arugula. The main entree is bistecca. Fresh caponata with white beans. Pasta today is going to be tagliatelle of mussels and clams. That's the hallmark. Paul, is that menu manageable? Yep. Looking at the menu, the bar is set at the 10, and we need to be able to get as high to the 10 as possible. Certainly nothing less than an 8 and a half. Dessert, Sharon. Carrot cake. Look at it. Beautiful. Sumptuous, sexy, and something you want to take home to bed. <laughs> Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> what? Take home to bed. Oh, boy. Shoot. You're killing me. Hello, welcome. You are Panera. Panera. With the new menu and the new decor in place. Follow me, please. Chef Ramsay has invited VIPs and dignitaries to show why Bazzini's is special, even amongst the 60 restaurants in town. Let's see what this so, new menu offers us. All pastas fresh, made here on the premises today. We have the calamari to start with. Calamari to start off, excellent. First order, yes? You have one polenta, one calamari? Yes, chef. You have one tortellini? Yes, chef. One tagliatelle. Al, I will get the calamari working, OK? OK. I'm going to try and get a little bit more color on it. Tickets coming in. I'm not thinking about, am I going to be able to do it? I'm not thinking about, oh my god, we're going to crash. It's about me pushing myself to be the person that I am. Tonight, Paul's attitude couldn't be better. Get like four more plenty's working, please. And everything in the kitchen seems to be right on track. This is table number 21, chef. OK, good. Now, the first appetizers are at the pass. Hey, guys, it's raw here. Touch that. I can't send out raw calamari, yeah? Paul, please. Yes, chef. It's fucking raw. My god. Make sure everything's cooked. Paul, these tables are very okay. important. I need a second to think. Oh, come on. Al, you got to come on. I need help. I need you to get in the game with me. Please, I, I can't do it all alone. Al, please tell me how polenta. Please tell me how polenta. I know what's on the line. I know we got dignitaries in the diner. We have to get the job done. We have to get it done well. We have to just get it done. Get an order in. It's table 21. Guys, I can't cook and talk and manage the tickets. I need help. I'm not working alone here. Well, it was a total disaster. He got flustered, I guess, and there was a lack of communication. The pressure of relaunch night has clearly gotten to Paul, his sous chef Al, and the rest of the kitchen staff. No, we're not firing at the moment. And 45 minutes in, not a single entree has left the kitchen. We speak so highly of the fresh pasta, you have to bring it out. Yes. Talk to me, Paul, please. OK, I'm 24. I'm Tortellini, I'm tag special. It's only a two-top, yeah? But, Chef, I want to get this four pastas out first. Yeah, I know, but what I'm trying to say yes, to you chef, is yes. it's the same dish. Put a four and a two-top together, kill two birds with one stone. Position yourself. Absolutely. Manipulate chef. the board to your advantage. Yeah. Come on. An hour and a half later. Of course. We're hungry. Yeah, this is, this is I'm sorry. Always, yeah. It's an hour and I absolutely minutes. understand. Well, I hate to say it, but 33 has been waiting forever. I mean, they were one of the first tables that walked in this store. Everything is a complete mess. Nobody's getting their food. The orders are all mixed up. It's just unbelievable out there. These VIP tables, yeah, are waiting too long. I need some help. I need someone to move tickets. I can't do everything I myself. Need some communication. We need to fucking cook. We're sinking like the Titanic in here. Let's just cook! This is such a shame. Paul shut down, he's not communicating, and more importantly, I think he's given up. God's sake. Come on, Paul! Paul! I'm doing 400 things at once. I'm trying to do damage control at this point. Damage control is not what I want to do at this point. I want to cook, I want to get food out, I want, you know, clearly I need some help. 41. I need to know how long. I need someone to tell me what 41 is. Don't have eyes in the back of my head. OK. What's our ETA on 45, Paul? Al, talk to Al. Guys, please stop cooking! 
45 and I still don't have an answer on 41. Oh, for Christ's sake. This table's been waiting for an hour. Can't do it all. I, I got this. I don't know that for sure. Well, I've been waiting for like this. Everybody here is waiting. Oh, hey, don't shush me. We're all working together here. I, I, we don't I, need a shusher. Guys, this is the most important night of this guy's life. Quit the arguing. Everything crashed. I don't know if it's the Titanic or the Hindenburg, but it's a fucking mess. All right, I know you don't want to hear this, but I need a pasta special and I need it immediately. Bloody hell, where's Al? Where's my sous chef? The only one in this kitchen. Oh. Al! Al! Where is Al? I don't know. Where the fuck is Al? We don't know. He's gone. No sign of him. He's clearly gone. God's sakes, man. Al! Al! It's relaunch night at Bazzini's, and not only are customers getting restless. An hour and a half later, of course, we're hungry. But sous chef Al has gone AWOL. Where's Al? Where's my sous chef? Al! Al! I think he quit. I was shocked that Al walked out. That really sucks. There was a shock wave that went through the kitchen, the service staff. No one could really believe it. Come on, guys, please. And you just left high and dry like that. It's a little difficult. Listen to me. Al may be gone, but the customers need feeding. Let's support one another. But as a human being with compassion, you go in, you help, and you give it your best shot. All right, take a deep breath. I'm glad to help. If you cook the garnishes, I can cook the lamb, the strip. Yes? Yes, chef. Let's go, then. I can only imagine what's happening in that kitchen back there. Start working on three tag, two pepper deli straight after, yes? Yes, chef. Good. I'll do the risotto. Sharon, are you with me? I'm totally with you. Sharon, congratulations. And a new sous chef. I'm very embarrassed. Our sous chef walked out. It's not even full. Oh, it's too tight. You know, it's like, it's, it's like staunch, yeah? Good girl, Sharon. Thank you, chef. Good girl. Let's go. Talk to me. Come on, Paul, please. I'm one minute from dressing. I'm one minute from dressing. Chef, I'm working. It's still going to be a few minutes. I apologize. Tag special in the window. Good girl. Thank you, Sharon. Service, please. To save tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has taken over the kitchen. Come back for the risotto, please. And along with Sharon's help... Well done, Sharon. ...food is now entering the dining room. That's unique, shell. Sometimes in time, receive. But now the question is, do the customers feel it was worth the wait? The food is fantastic. Way. Worth the wait. Risotto oh, wow. has a wonderful taste. Mm -hmm. Great oh, yeah, risotto. Right yeah. We had some challenges, you know? We had some things that weren't expected to happen. But that said, everyone stepped up as best as they could, got good feedback from the people. So, you know, I feel it was success. Before I spend some time, with Paul and Leslie, I just want to say um, a big thank you. Yeah, your desserts are fantastic. Over the desserts, your personality is, for me, fundamental to the longevity and the potential success of this restaurant. And I just want to say uh, a big thank you. Well done, my darling. Yeah. Oh, ay, 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 ay. I enjoyed his company. I think he enjoyed mine, and I hope I made him proud. Thank you. Because I really tried very hard. Right, that wasn't easy. No. No, nowhere near it. Uh, however, I know the customers love the food. Absolutely. Yeah? And tonight confirmed that you have an identity. Mm -hmm. The fresh pasta is out there. But, truthfully, as hard as this is for me to say to you face to face, uh, honestly, Paul, you haven't changed enough to convince me that this can turn around. I was totally focused and totally committed. No, 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 no. You weren't, Paul. Jeff. No, no, come on, big boy. The first appetizer had raw squid, not slightly seared, raw. 20 minutes later, the place was sunk. You needed me. I regrouped, got the kitchen back together. I've never worked this hard in launching a restaurant. The truth hurts, Paul. You've got to start telling yourself some serious home truths. The way to becoming a better chef is to realize your weaknesses and improve those weaknesses. I've taken all of the advice, and I've taken a lot of it to heart, and I've seen a lot of it of what I do is wrong. Here's my advice. At the heart of this restaurant has to be you, your food, you on the plate. You have to stand up to the plate and hold the reins.
I know that it starts and stops with me, and I know that I have to be the leader, and I know that I have to command the troops, and I take responsibility for so that. You say all the right things always, but now it's time to do the right things. Right. Can I think? Can I have a I think that Chef Ramsay came in and really identified the problems, and I think he certainly helped Paul, and I totally feel that all the tools we have are enough to save the restaurant. Chef. Yes, Chef. Good luck. Thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate everything. Appreciate all your hard Cheers. work and, and everything you've done for me. It's over to you now. I yeah. won't let you down. This experience has been amazing. I've been put on the path to success, and I'm really excited about going forward. Please, don't let yourself down. Thanks very much. Good night. Good night. What a week. Ridgewood may have 60 restaurants within four blocks, but I do believe the new Bazzini's, with its fresh pasta, can be a huge local success. Unfortunately, I'm just not sure about Paul, but nothing would make me happier if you could prove me wrong. After Gordon's departure, Paul immediately hired a strong sous chef. And with the new fresh pasta identity, Bazzini's experienced a boost in business. Oh, sorry.